Good morning, everyone. And welcome. We're so grateful to have you here for our first session on Saturday today, our seaweed session. My name is Linda Hunter, and I'm one of the Seaweed Festival team members and pleased to host this morning's seaweed session. We're asking you to remain muted this morning while we do our craft, but if you're comfortable and if you'd like to join us in community, you're very welcome to put your camera on and to join us there. And if you can't find your camera, it's in the bottom left. If you can see on the bottom left of your screen, you'll see a little microphone and a little video camera. And if you click on the video camera, then you will be able to see your beautiful faces this morning. We'll leave that up to you. As we move through today's session, we invite you to send your questions at any time. And you can put those in the chat box and where you see the label for host, you can pop your questions in there and we'll ask your questions throughout the session today if you have any. I'd like to introduce you to Annika Friesen, who is an educator with the Shaw Center for the Salish Sea, a nonprofit aquarium and learning center here in Sydney, BC. Annika is continuously inspired by curious visitors of all ages, and she's a big fan of kelp forests and all the animals that call them home. Welcome, Annika. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Um, if we are ready to get started, I can jump right into it. Um, so yeah, my name is Annika and I'm one of the educators here at the Shaw Center for the Salish Sea. Um, and you can see that right now I'm actually in front of our kelp forest exhibit, um, which is really exciting. And um, yeah, it's really nice to be in front of this. Um, the plan for today is to build our own kelp forest or build an underwater forest. Uh, and so some of you might have the template. It looks like this and it is available on our website, but if you don't have the template, that's okay. You can also just use a blank sheet of paper and I will show you what uh, it will look like when we're all done. So I have one example over here, uh, but I think what's great is that all of ours are going to look different. Um, so this is a little bit what it's going to look like once once we're all done. Can kind of spin it around so you can see what to expect. And I will be switching back and forth between seeing the kelp forest behind me and, and me talking. Um, and I'll angle the camera down when I'm showing you what I'm doing um, with the craft itself. So we'll kind of go back and forth a little bit. And like Linda mentioned, any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the chat and we'll, we'll get back to you there. Uh, so we can get started. So I have uh, on my table here, I have uh, my template, I have a blank piece of paper to show as an example for anyone who is just using a blank piece of paper. I have my coloring supplies and I have some scissors and I have some tape. Uh, that is what we will need to be doing this craft. Uh, the first step is going to be to cut out some of the pieces. So if you're not comfortable using scissors, uh, please ask an adult to help you out. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to angle down here, is we're going to cut out the rectangle on the top part of the sheet. If you just have a blank piece of paper, you'll just take your paper, fold it in half, hamburger style, and you'll cut along that line. So if you're just using a blank piece of paper, just cut along there. Uh, I'm gonna show on the template. So I'm going to cut right down here. And we're just gonna cut along the lines. Uh, this piece that I'm cutting right now is going to become our kelp. Uh, so once we're all done, you'll kind of see how we roll that up. But for now, we're just going to cut it out. And once you're done cutting, you can start coloring it. And I think I might use markers for coloring, but you could also use crayons. You could use pencil crayons. Uh, the, the options are endless. So there, I've got mine cut out there. Um, so now I'm going to start coloring it. Um, so yeah, let me. Let me color it right over here. So I'm just gonna color the whole thing. Um, so while I do that, I'm gonna put it back up on here so you can get some inspiration from the animals, but I'm just coloring my kelp. Um, and you do wanna color both sides because when we roll it up, you're going to be able to see both sides a little bit. So I'm gonna do lots and lots of brown here. Kelp is a brown algae and that's what you can see blowing behind me in the water. Um, and like Linda mentioned, there are a lot of different animals that call kelp forests home. Home. There are also a lot of animals that might visit a kelp forest, even though they don't spend their whole lives there. Um, and so we're gonna add some animals a bit later on. Uh, but for starters, we need to have some kelp to make our kelp forest. So I, flipping, I flipped mine over, I'm going to color the other side. 
And I might actually add some little hints of green or maybe some yellow as well, just to give my kelp a little bit more dimension. But you can color it whatever color you want. If you want pink kelp, you can have pink kelp. If you want blue kelp, you could do blue. It's really up to you. So maybe I'll add a little bit of green in mine. Uh, so kelp is kind of similar to trees. So in a forest, we have lots of trees. In an underwater forest, like a kelp forest, we have kelp, which is a type of seaweed. So it isn't really a plant, but it is very similar to a plant in a lot of ways. And kind of one of the biggest ways that it's similar is that it also does photosynthesis. So it uh, absorbs sunlight and uses that energy uh, to grow. And that's a lot like a plant. It has some differences in the structure and we'll get to kind of talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, but it does look a lot like a plant that's just blowing underwater, kind of like how plants might blow when it's a really windy day. And you might have actually seen a kelp forest if you live near an ocean. Sometimes you only see it from the very, very top. So if you can imagine only seeing these fronds rippling at the surface of the water or maybe washed up on a beach, you might have already seen a little piece of a kelp forest before. But I kind of like having this side view of one so I could see the animals that live there. All right, so I am just about finished coloring in my, my kelp here. So if you're not finished, that's okay. You can always finish it in a little bit, but I'll show you what I've done so far. So I have some brownish green on the side. Mine's kind of stripey, and I did color both sides. So you can kind of see it's quite a bit of a pattern and, and we'll see what that looks like once it is all rolled up. Um, so if we're ready to roll it up, um, this part is kind of a fun part. Um, so you're going to take your kelp piece that's right now it's just a rectangle and you're going to hold it on along the long side like this and that's where you're going to roll it up from. So I'll put it down so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm holding it on the long side and I'm going to roll the whole thing up. And I'm gonna roll it pretty small, maybe about as wide as my finger, maybe even a little bit smaller. You can kind of see this, that's how I'm gonna roll it up. And then I'm gonna use my tape and I'm going to tape it together so it stays kind of rolled up. I'm just gonna do one piece of tape in the middle here. All right, so now we have the start of our kelp. So you can see mine's pretty funky and stripey here. And so kelp stands vertically, it stands upright a little bit like a tree. Um, but I think you can see that my kelp isn't quite finished yet. Um, definitely not quite finished. So you can see in our kelp forest exhibit behind me, there's lots of the fronds, which are kind of like leaves on a kelp blowing in the water. Um, we're gonna have to make some of those. So we're gonna get our scissors again, and we're gonna cut from the top. So pick one end to be the top, and you're gonna cut a little ways down, maybe a couple inches down. So I've cut about that much, maybe not quite as long as my finger. And we're gonna cut a few slits down here. You can make them wavy if you want. You can make them really, really thin or really thick. It's kind of up to you. And then you can kind of imagine that this is going to be the fronds of your kelp. So you can twist them around to make them blow in an imaginary current. But we're not done yet. Uh, so kelp also has something really interesting at the bottom, which you can't see behind me because um, we can't quite see the bottom. Um, but at the bottom of a plant, if you've ever seen the bottom of a plant, they have roots that go into the ground. Kelp has something a little bit different. So it doesn't have any roots that go into the ground. It has what's called a holdfast. And it actually just clings right onto a rock. So it actually sits on top of a rock. So we're going to make a little tiny holdfast by again using our scissors. And at the bottom of the kelp, we're going to do a couple of little tiny cuts, really small ones. So they're maybe like one centimeter and fold it up. So I'll, I'll fold it up so you can see how big they are. There we go. So that's gonna be our hold fast. So, so far our kelp looks like this. It looks kind of like a tree, but we're remembering that it's not quite like a tree, but it is very similar. So we can set that aside for now. And we can start to work on what's kind of going to be around the kelp. Uh, so on, if you have the template, we're going to use 
this part next. So the part that has a circle in the middle, it's outlined in a square, and we're going to cut out that square. If you were just using a blank sheet of paper, you're going to fold it in half again so that you have not quite a square, a little rectangle, and you're going to cut that way um, so that you end up with a piece that's about one quarter of a page. Um, so I'm going to cut out my square on the template. And this is going to be our base of the craft. It's going to be the sea floor. This is going to be what's at the very, very bottom of the craft. So I'm just going to cut along the lines here. And as you're cutting, you might notice that there are a few different animals that are going to be at the bottom of my kelp forest. Um, but you might also notice something else. Um, so I'll hold it up really close to the camera here. You can see we've got a sea star, we have a crab, we have some mussels, another sea star. And underneath them, there are some rocks. So I mentioned the hold fast, that's how the kelp grabs onto the rocks. So we have to actually have some rocks for it to grab onto. Um, so now that I'm done cutting it, I'm going to do some coloring. So maybe I'll make some of my animals some different colors down here. So maybe I'll do a little green sea star. And there are lots of different colors that you might see in a kelp forest. A lot of people tell me when they visit our kelp forest that it looks like it's tropical because it's so colorful. Um, it's, this is all local stuff. So all of these animals that you'll see in my kelp forest, they all live here, um, which is amazing. And they're so beautiful. But it also means that there's so much diversity that whatever colors you decide to put on your kelp forest, they probably exist in a real kelp forest which I think is really neat. I love that there's so much color and it's so beautiful. So I'm coloring my crab down here. I'm gonna color it red. Maybe I should make a stripey sea star just for fun. So I'm gonna make this one pink and yellow. Annika, we have a question for you. Yes. What do you feed the kelp forest? That is a really great question. So I'm gonna show the camera or show the kelp forest on the camera for this. Um, so you can see that there's a couple of different animals um, that are living in our kelp forest. Um, so I mentioned the kelp absorbs uh, light, sunlight uh, for its energy. So you can see that there's some light kind of filtering down into the kelp forest. So we don't actually have to feed the kelp. It just absorbs the sunlight. Uh, but the animals that are in here, uh, this one that's, that I'm pointing at here, this is one of our rockfish. So there's a lot of different rockfish in here. Um, there's also some perch and I'm going to try and point this one over here is a perch. And so these are fish that would live in a kelp forest um, and they would eat quite a few different things. Um, so one of the one of the most common foods uh, that we feed here is krill. And if you've never heard of krill, it's like a little shrimp. Um, and we definitely feed that to a lot of our animals. So the rockfish like this orange one here, this canary rockfish, it would love to eat some krill. Uh, the perch would eat krill. Um, there are other animals that you can't really see necessarily. Ooh, I can see just the head of one of our wolf eels poking out down there. They would eat some krill as well, um, but they also eat other things too. So squid would be one thing. Um, what else do we feed them? Krill, squid. We feed them other types of um, shrimp as well. And then you can also maybe see some pink and white anemones kind of near the bottom. And they would eat some very, very small shrimp. They would eat something called plankton. Um, so plankton is anything that floats in the water. So we definitely feed plankton to our kelp forest as well. Is there anybody else that I'm missing in here? There's also some fish hiding at the bottom that you maybe can see, or maybe you'll see at one point kind of near the gray wool field. There's a little red fish that I'm trying to point at here. That one's called a greenling. They would eat some of the very same food. Um, definitely krill is a big one. Uh, yeah, great question. Everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs to eat, except for the kelp. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of coloring while I was talking. So you can see I've got some of the animals colored here. Um, but I also want to make sure I color the rocks. So I'm going to show you that next. So maybe I'll have some blue rocks here just for fun. Blue rock. So yeah, like I mentioned, this is going to be the bottom of the kelp forest. So this is kind of like the sea floor. So you'll have different animals that might live at the bottom compared to the ones that live at the top. So these ones here that I'm coloring right now are some little mussels. 
which is a little tiny shellfish. Well, it's not that tiny, but it's a little shellfish. Annika, here's another question. Mm -hmm. Does does the kelp just float around or is it stuck at the bottom? Ooh, that is a really good question. Um, so you can see that the top of it definitely floats around and it kind of blows on the current. Um, but the bottom, that hold fast that we cut at the very, very bottom of ours with the little tiny grabby things, um, that is how it attaches. So it's going to attach onto the rocks and we will attach ours once we're done coloring. Um, you can't really see it on our kelp forest because it's kind of hidden at the bottom amongst the rocks, but it definitely is attached at the bottom. Um, so that means that when it's very, very stormy and the waves are crashing, the kelp is able to hold on really, really tight um, unless it's a really big storm and that's when you find it washed up on the beach. But I've actually sometimes found kelp on the beach that still is actually attached to the rock. So it, the storm washed the kelp onto the shore and it brought the rock with it, so it never let go of the rock. So they are very, very strong with how they attach. Okay, I'm gonna finish coloring my rocks over here. My rocks are all different colors. And maybe in between the rocks, I will add some sand. There's often sand at the bottom of the ocean, so I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of dots to, to represent my sand. And if you want, there is lots of extra space kind of on the one corner of the, the base, one corner of the seafloor. So if you have any other animals you want to add down here, if you want to add some bottom fish, you can totally add some bottom fish. And you can always add more afterwards once we're done building it too. Um, but I think I'm going to stop there so that I can add some more animals. So this is what mine looks like right now. Yours might look different, I'm sure. Um, and so we are going to kind of move on to the next step. So we can set our sea floor aside for a minute. And we're going to use our last piece of the template that has some of the animals on it. So this is actually, these are supposed to be some rockfish, like what this one just swimming up towards my head is right now. Um, we also have a sea urchin, that's the really spiky one. The other one that looks kind of spiky is a sea cucumber. Um, they're related to sea urchins, but they're actually not super spiky. Uh, we have another sea star here and we have a sea otter. Um, so I'm going to cut these ones out. Actually, first I'm going to color them and then I'm going to cut them out. Um, and if you're using the blank piece of paper with the last quarter that's left, you can draw whatever animals you like here. Um, and even if you're using the template, there's some space to add the animals that you like as well. Uh, but yes, we're going to start by coloring them and then we're going to cut them out. Makes it a lot easier. Annika, we have a question. Yes. Can you tell us if all kelp are the same? Do they all look similar? That is a really good question. They can look radically different from each other. Um, so even behind me, it's kind of hard to see, but we have quite a few different species of kelp in here. So I'll see if I can point some out. Um, so right in the middle, there's some that are quite tall and with the with lots and lots of the fronds blowing. And that one is bull kelp. And I'm kind of imagining that the kelp I'm making here is bull kelp because it's kind of got one top with all the fronds coming off. We also have we also have some uh, feather boa kelp, which is this one that's a little bit lower down. And so it has kind of smaller fronds. So the fronds might be different sizes. The kelp itself might be a different size. We also have, what else do we have in here? We have some little, some stocked kelp at the top, which has a really, really thick stipe, which is kind of this main, the height part of the kelp. We've also got some sugar kelp at the top. So there's lots of different types. And so they might be different sizes. They might be different shapes. They might even have different, um, different parts. And so I mentioned the frond. So, pretty much all kelp has the fronds. That's how they do the photosynthesis, is how they absorb the sunlight. Um, but the hold fast they have might look different. So they, some of them kind of grab onto the rocks, some of them kind of stick onto the rocks. And so those might look pretty different. Some of them, like the bull kelp that's kind of in the middle behind me has a bulb and it looks like a ball or like a balloon. And that is what lets the kelp kind of the top side of it float up high when the bottom is still attached. Um, but not all seaweeds have bulbs, um, which is pretty interesting. So some of them have to have a different structure in order to kind of make sure they stay near the surface where the sunlight is. So there are so many different types. I don't think I even know all the types. I definitely don't. I like learning about it though. There's a lot to learn. 
All right. Thanks for that question. I'm coloring some more animals here. So I'm going to show you what I have so far. So I colored my two rockfish. I colored my sea urchin. Maybe I'll do something funky and I'll do a blue sea otter just for fun. Annika, can you tell us how tall kelp is? Well, that's another good question. So you can see that this one back here, if I stood up, it would actually be taller than me. I'm not that tall, but it's taller than me. Um, but the biggest kelp in the world is giant kelp. And that actually lives here in the Salish Sea. And it can be up to 50 meters tall, uh, which is incredible. Um, and I was looking up how tall are some trees. So some local trees like the Gary Oak tree or the Arbutus tree, if any of you know those ones, they can be up to 25 meters tall, which means that giant kelp is twice as tall as those trees. Um, there is another very tall tree that lives around here, the Douglas fir tree, and it can be up to 100 meters tall, uh, which means kelp is about half as tall as one of those really tall trees. Um, so it is amazing. Uh, bull kelp, which we have behind us, is not quite as tall. It's only 30 meters tall, uh, which is still incredibly tall, still taller than that, uh, the Gary Oak tree and the Arbutus tree. There's also some kelp that's quite a bit smaller, like there's the um, like sugar kelp will be like a couple meters long. Um, there's also some seaweed that's really, really tiny, like smaller than my hand. Some of it's only as tall as my, like a finger. Um, so there's quite a big diversity, but kelp does have some of the biggest algae in the world um, or the biggest algae in the world, the giant kelp. Wow, fascinating. Now, how about you? Do you have a favorite animal? And Would why you, is it your favorite? Do I have a favorite animal? That is a really fun question. I think I have a lot of favorite animals. I think I pick a new favorite every day, but I'm going to say today my favorite animal is a sea urchin, which is this spiky one that I colored pink here. Um, I like them because they're spiky. Um, they look really, really cool. Uh, they also eat kelp. Um, and I think the way that they eat kelp is really amazing to me. So if you ever see the bottom, the underside of a sea urchin, they actually have five teeth, which is a really interesting number of teeth. And the teeth are arranged in a circle, which means that when they take a bite, they kind of come together in a star and they open and close in a star pattern. And I love seeing the, the biting patterns, the grazing patterns um, on some of the algae we have here. We don't actually have any sea urchins in our kelp forest right now because they would eat all of our kelp. Um, but we do have sea urchins in other places. So I think today they're my favorite animal. All right, I'm almost finished coloring my my extra animals to add into my kelp forest. And yeah, like I mentioned, if you want to add your favorite animal into the kelp forest, it might live in a kelp forest all the time, or it might just be a visitor, but you can add whatever you like into your kelp forest. Okay, so I just finished coloring all of mine, so I'm going to cut them out. Um, and yeah, if you need help with scissors, definitely ask an adult to help you out. Um, but I'm gonna cut and I'm actually gonna leave a little bit of white space around so I don't have to cut exactly on the lines. Um, and I think that makes it a little bit easier uh, for me to cut. Um, but it also means that the animals are really gonna stand out uh, when I add them into my kelp forest. But you can cut yours out however you like. And then, yeah, once we're done cutting, our last stage will be to attach everything together and add all of our animals into their new kelp forest home. So I'm cutting out the sea cucumber, cutting out the sea otter I have. I'm very curious to hear if anybody drew any extra animals. Curious to hear about that after. because maybe you've been to a beach before and you've seen different animals living around the kelp or in the kelp or hiding. Or sometimes I can even see animals in a kelp forest just from looking from above. Like if I'm standing on the rocks on the shore, I've seen animals hiding inside, like maybe some crabs. I've added a crab to my kelp forest before. And right now I'm cutting out my rockfish, which are a lot of our kelp forest inhabitants behind me. There's lots of different types of rockfish. Um, 
the one that you can kind of see behind me right here that I'm pointing out with my scissors is a is a black rockfish. But I'm pretty sure my rockfish that I colored are a different species because they don't look exactly like that black rockfish. Different color. Annika, here's another question. Mm -hmm. Are there are there kelp in all oceans and beaches? Ooh, that's a really good question. So kelp has some some preferences. They have a type of environment that they like to live in. They like cold water. Um, so they don't like really, really warm water usually. Um, and they also tend to like crashing waves and rocks. Um, so you'll find more kelp in areas that are cold with crashing waves and lots of rocks. So you won't find as many on like a sandy beach, like the famous sandy tropical beaches probably won't have a lot of kelp. Um, around here in the Salish Sea, the sandy beaches tend to have more like eelgrass, um, which is not a seaweed. It's a flowering plant that looks a lot like the grass in your lawn, but stretched way out. Um, whereas if you go to a rocky beach, you'll see more of the kelp. Um, so there are a lot of different types that live in many types of the world, but they tend to be more in the rocky, rocky rough seas. Okay, so I just finished cutting out all my animals. I, so I think our next step is going to be to assemble our kelp forest. We're gonna build it, we're gonna put it together. Um, so I'm gonna put my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but basically we're gonna attach our kelp using the hold fast onto a rock at the bottom. And then we're gonna add the animals wherever we want to put them. So I'm gonna angle it down here so you can see. So I've got my kelp and oops, it's gonna fall over if I don't tape it. A real kelp would have a hold fast to hold it up. So I'm just gonna tape on our paper hold fast on the base. We're gonna tape that down. Um, and then I'm going to add all of my animals and you get to decide where to add your animals. So some of them might be swimming through the kelp forest past the stipe, which is this tall part. Some of them might be hiding up in the fronds at the very, very top. Some of them might be climbing up. So you get to decide. So maybe for today, I'm gonna to put my sea otter, maybe having a little snooze in the fronds at the very top. Um, sea otters breathe air just like we do. So they, they do spend a lot of time at the top of a kelp forest, but they also dive down to go hunting. So you could put yours anywhere. My sea cucumber here, I'm gonna attach it maybe onto the sand because I had some space over there. Annika? Yeah. You've, you've talked about a hold fast. What's a real hold fast? A real hold fast is the bottom part of a kelp that looks like roots. Um, so I don't, you can't see it in our kelp forest, um, but it kind of, if you kind of make your fingers go all together like this, it kind of looks like, looks like that. It looks like roots. And that is how the kelp attaches onto the rocks. Okay. I know it's kind of hard to imagine. So I've got a couple more animals to add. And if you drew a whole bunch of animals, this, this step might take you quite a long time, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm adding my last sea star. Maybe I will add it climbing up the stipe, the tall part of the kelp forest. And so that leads me to showing you what the kelp forest that I made looks like here. So I have my funky little sea otter at the top and I have some rockfish swimming together um, part way down, maybe about halfway down. I have a sea urchin at the very, very bottom and is probably very excited to eat this kelp. I've got my sea cucumber, I have my sea star and my crabs. I have another sea star climbing up the kelp. Um, and yeah, I'm really curious to see if other people want to share what they made. You might not be quite done yet, and that's okay. Um, I've made a couple different ones. This is the one I just made right now. Uh, but, the, but the other day I made this one over here. So you can see this one looks a little bit different. And if you really enjoy this craft, you can actually make your kelp into an entire forest by making more and more and more of the, the kelp itself. And so you could attach a whole bunch of them together, or what I actually did a couple days ago is I, here we go, spent a whole bunch of time making a whole forest. And so I added some different animals here. So you can maybe see a crab hiding, a blue crab hiding at the very top. So maybe that's a kelp crab. And I also had a seal that's swimming through the kelp. So you can be as creative as you like and you can make your kelp forest as big as you like. 
Um, if anybody would like to share what they made, I think we would all really love to see that. I see some people holding things up to the screen. Wow, beautiful. Annika, here's another hold fast question for you. With the hold fast, can the kelp move from one rock to another or do they stay on the same one all the time? That's a really good question. As far as I know, kelp will stay on the same hold, uh, they'll use their hold fast to stay on the same rock the whole time. Um, there is a species of kelp called walking kelp. Um, and so when the waves crash, the, the kelp kind of looks like it's walking kind of from one place to another, um, but it's actually holding onto the same rock. So the rock is kind of coming with it as the waves move it, as the, as the waves crash on the shore. Um, I don't know of any examples where the kelp moves from one rock to another, but I'd be very curious to learn about that. Did anybody else want to show what their kelp forest looked like that they made? I saw a couple of very cool ones just very briefly at the top in the in the cameras there. We have some shy kelp today. Oh, that's one. okay. Beautiful. Oh, that's really oh. cool. I like that you can see the fish swimming through the kelp forest on, on the one that I'm looking at. That's very cool. And yeah, this might, you might want to spend a long time adding more and more animals to your kelp forest. So it's totally okay if you're not done. Um, we also, there is the option to, if you want to share it on social media, we always love to see people's creations. And our handle is at Salish Sea Center. Um, so if you finish it tomorrow and you want to share, we'd still love to see, to see what you've made. Annika, can you tell us why kelp forests are important, why they matter? Oh. There's so many reasons. That's a great question. I could probably go so many different directions um, with that answer. Um, so kelp forest, one of the reasons that they are so important is that they are homes for all of these different animals. So the ones we can see here, the rockfish, the perch, uh, the greenlings, the sea urchins, the crabs, um, they're a really important habitat for these animals and more. Um, so we didn't even see any seals, um, whales use kelp forests. Uh, herring, uh, which is a small fish, they lay their eggs. On, on kelp sometimes. Uh, the salmon that we all know and love will forage. They'll go hunting in kelp forests. So it's very, very important to a lot of animals. It's also very important to us. Um, so kelp is used for lots of different things. And I think that's what we, a lot of us have been learning during seaweed days um, this week um, is that kelp, a lot of it's edible. It could be used in many different things. Um, even the kelp habitat as a whole um, kind of uh, protects the shore from crashing waves um, and it absorbs carbon dioxide just like plants do um, so it's very important for the environment as well i could talk for a very long time on this but i think i'll stop there can you tell us a little bit about the aquarium where you're at mm -hmm. yeah so we this is one of our exhibits this is our kelp forest exhibit um, that you've already got to see a little bit of here um, but we have other exhibits but they are all focused on local species and local habitats um, so it's, yeah, it's very much a local nonprofit aquarium. Right now we are open five days a week. So we're closed Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, so people might be actually showing up here today in about 20 minutes. Um, but we, yeah, we're located in Sydney right on the waterfront. Um, the other thing I should mention is uh, COVID safety. And so we, that's part of uh, the reason that we're closed for two days a week. Um, so we do lots and lots of cleaning. Um, we have a limited number of people that can come into the building. Um, so if you ever do come in, you might have to wait in a short lineup to make sure that there's enough space for everybody, but it usually doesn't take too long. Um, what else? What else are we doing right now? There was one other thing I wanted to say and then I completely forgot. Linda, was there something in mind that I, I missed? <laughs> No, that was perfect. I wanted okay. people to know that they could visit and what your COVID protocols are. And tell, tell us, um, uh, how long have you been at the aquarium? I've been here for three years. Um, okay. It's actually going to be my three year anniversary, I think in two weeks. Very exciting. Beautiful. Um, oh, the other thing is that we wear masks. I'm just okay. not wearing a mask right now because I'm on camera, but we do wear okay. masks all the rest of the time. Perfect. Yes. Okay. 
Well, I think this is a wonderful craft for everyone to do. And I think, do you have, um, uh, I know there's a page on the website and I think we put a link on it. I think there, are there some other things that you can um, learn about on that page as well? I think there's some scavenger hunt, some other information. Definitely. So on, on to... the website, there's a few different things. So some of them are activities that are designed, you can print them off and then bring them to the to the aquarium to do. So some scavenger hunts to do in here, um, some activity sheets. But there's also other ones that are designed to do at home. So this kelp forest craft is really easy to do from home. And there's a couple other um, activity pages on that website as well that you can that you can do from home and learn about it because not everybody is able to visit right now. Um, and we still want people to be able to learn about about the ocean and all these habitats around here. For sure. Um, and with the with the template for the craft for the craft that we just did, there's also an instruction sheet that you can always check back on as well. Great, and we've popped so that thanks information. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, we popped the information in there for everybody so they can uh, learn more. That's wonderful. Great. Anything else you'd like to share or any last words with everybody? Um, no, I was gonna see if there were any other questions. I think, I think we're... Yeah, I think you've done a great job of explaining everything and, and showing everybody. What a wonderful craft. I hope that everybody's had a craft. really, yeah, I hope everyone's had a fun time. What a great way to so start too. our weekend. And yeah. yes, thank you all very much for joining me. And thank you all for hosting me as well. This was very fun for me. Well, we appreciate your time and your energy and all your enthusiasm and all that great learning. So thank you. Thanks. What a wonderful way to start our Saturday. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you at the next seaweed session. Stay well. Enjoy your kelp forest.